realistically just need to relax like fully always all the time uh, it has just been an absolute ego trip of a uh... oh man Whew. I was thinking about how like you know for this podcast I I always try to get into a good headspace and you know convey ideas that I think people will resonate with positively and uh Sometimes you just have, <laughs> I mean, that's just not what life is. It's just not always going the way that you thought it was going to go. Sometimes I think you, you can, you can certainly dictate it and convince and, and get it to go. What am I talking about here? I'm going so fast right now just because I'm in my head <laughs> about uh, recording this. I was about to pop out to go, uh, to go outside and record this and then I my roommate got back with his brother and his girlfriend who I love all of them um and I was like they were like what are you up to I'm like oh I'm gonna go pop out and record an episode of the beach cast and uh and then they were like oh you want to wait a sec we'll come out with you and I I I have such difficulty saying no to people like truly like it it I don't know what it is, but I, I guess my mind just interprets me saying no as like, I assume that their response is then going to be that they're mad at me and not just like, okay. (laughs) And I, and I, especially in moments where I feel like I don't really have a re like what I would have, I guess I could have just been like, yeah, like I kind of, I'm just going to go solo. Like what a reasonable thing to say. That's what I... (laughs) Like my whole life I've, I've had such a hard time telling the truth when it comes to not doing things. And I always feel like I need to have an excuse and it like stresses me out a lot to, to say no to people, especially if the excuse, I don't think that they would think the excuse that I have or not even excuse, but the reason that I don't want to hang out or don't want to do something, I I feel like they won't think it's valid. And then they'll just interpret it as like, I just don't like them. (laughs) It's just ego trying to like control life and control the outcomes and convincing myself that I, I, I can figure this out and, and li- come up with an elaborate enough lie that will preserve our friendship that isn't at stake, like at all. <laughs> like, um, oh man, I've just been going through an absolute ego trip this whole weekend. Like, well, actually before this weekend. So I was booked on a stand-up show, one of my friends was producing this show, and uh, he it was scheduled, he was like, hey, you wanna do my show January 29th? And I was like, yeah, hell yeah. And then uh, he was like, great. And then a couple of weeks later, he uh, messaged me and was like, hey, like I'm gonna cancel because of COVID. You know, the turnouts haven't been great for comedy shows. And I was like, no worries, totally understand. And then uh, it's February 20, it was like February 22nd or something. And uh, I saw that he had posted an Instagram story of, uh, his show he was like hey my comedy show is on February 26th like hope to see you there and immediately I was like oh god like <laughs> you know what did I do what did I do that caused this guy to now hate me to the point where he doesn't want me on his comedy show that's that's what goes on immediately in my head my brain's like okay what did I do what do I need to do to fix it is he mad at me does he hate me danger question mark (laughs) danger (laughs) and the danger like just and and, and first of all like I haven't talked to the guy of course so my brain's just filling in every every possible explanation and they all are negative like it's not just like you know he forgot or something but part of me was like okay like I'm stressing out a little bit about this because certainly seemed like we had a plan to reschedule for February and now I'm not on the show. So, um, I was going to reach out to my other friend who put me in touch with this new friend of mine, um, to see like, you know, is this like, did something happen? Like what's going on? And then I was like, well, I don't want to contact him because then my other friend, the guy putting on the comedy show is going to be like, you went behind my back. And like, you know, I'm already assigning this entire personality to this person that I don't really know very well. Um, 
just because I think that he's already mad at me. So now I'm like, well, if I do that, here's another reason why he would be even more mad at me. So can't do that. Um, so I was kind of just like debating all day, trying to figure out like, what should I do about this? Should I say something? I don't want to be like, what the hell, man? Like, I don't want to piss this guy off any further than I hypothetically might have already. And, uh, I wasn't sure what to do, but I felt weird about it. And then I was walking, uh, I was running and then got tired. So I was walking and my friend, the, the mutual friend, uh, called me. And he was like, yo, you just walked right by my car. And I was like, no way. And then we ended up talking and just sort of in the midst of conversation, I just told him what had happened. And, uh, and he was like, oh, dude, don't even worry about it. Like, you know, don't, don't trip about it. Like, he basically just reassured me that it's not something that I did. He probably just like, you know, overbooked it or something or, or uh, you know, something came up. But it's not because he hates me. And me and me and this guy talk all the time about like I'll, I'll have him on the podcast. We talk all the time about anxiety and overthinking and stuff. And um, so it was very serendipitous timing to have him, or to have me walk by his car as he's driving, and to have him call me, and he was able to you know <clears throat> calm me down a little bit. And so I just sent a message to uh, the the booker, and I was like, Yo, dude, like I uh, just wanted to you know this lineup looks sweet because it was like an awesome lineup uh, for the show. And he and just wanted to say like yeah like would love to do your show still um, sometime slash whenever works. I thought that that was like a pretty fair non-imposing, you know, way to say hey <laughs> what the hell. <laughs> I thought we were I thought we were scheduled. Uh, and he responded and he was like oh dude I'm really sorry I just totally overbooked this show, and uh, we'll definitely get you on the next one. So, you know, could have just said that from the beginning and not tripped about it all day trying to figure out what the right thing to do is. And and (laughs) the craziest part was I had only seen him in person once since between when he asked me to do the show and when he posted about the show happening in February. And that was when I was coming back from uh, from playing tennis with my roommate. And, uh, I, he happened to be running by the producer and he was, and I was like, yo, what's up, dude? And he was like, yo. And I introduced him to my roommate as the, the guy who canceled his show because of COVID. (laughs) And I didn't really think anything of it in the moment. I was just, I meant to just be like, oh, this is the guy whose show I was going to do, but it got postponed because of COVID. But I convinced myself in this day of stewing on hypothetical scenarios that happened uh, I convinced myself that he was mad at me for saying that he canceled his show because of COVID (laughs) my brain you know just produced a possible explanation to why I wasn't booked on this show that is just such a stretch you know I'm creating this personality for this guy that's like hyper offended by something that I did like as if I have that much of an effect on, on people negatively, like as if I'd be able to just, (laughs) like, it's just, it's so the audacity to assume and to just like think, Oh, that could have made him mad. So that is what made him mad. And that's why I didn't get booked on the show. (laughs) Like, I think this guy hates me now because of that introduction, even though we talked, like we walked back to my, um, uh, we, we walked back to my apartment. He was just, he was on a run and he took a break to walk. And we walked for like 20 minutes, probably just chatting about stuff after that. And I think that just in that initial interaction, he, I said that, and then he just was so mad the rest of the conversation and so mad for the rest of the month that he just didn't even in, invite me to the show. So just another classic example of your brain, just not just trying to protect yourself from people being mad even when you have no confirmation that they are mad and just the absolute ridiculous hoops that we jump through to try to justify our thoughts and you know of course I was wrong about all of it and until we know that what we're worried about is what's going on can't worry about it because 
Otherwise, there's just you'll just always be worrying. <laughs> so anyway, like if I had just trusted the truth and trusted my intention and just, you know, sent him a message, the message that I did eventually send him, if I had just sent him that initially and just trusted like, okay, like I know that my intention was not to make fun of him for canceling the show because of COVID. And if that actually is what's going on, I can just trust him to tell me. And we can work it out and I can explain, you know, what actually happened. But if we live in the, in the thought world too much and just dwell there in hypothetical land, then you get so out of touch with reality that you're, you're, you're living in this alternative reality that even though it's not real, you're still feeling the emotions as if it's real. And then you're just... <laughs> It's a pretty ruthless, uh, ruthless reality to live in. So tr trust yourself more. I can trust myself to, to say what's right in the moment that will allow us to not be enemies, which we're not already. But in my head, we are, I guess. <laughs> so he sent me that message and, uh, and then obviously everything was fine. And then Saturday came around, so it's Sunday now. So the, sh the show was Saturday. And um, I went out Friday night and drank. And I I've been drinking less and less because I, I find that the impact that it has on my life drastically outweighs the enjoyment that I get out of it. Like, you know, I'll, after a certain number of shots, it's like, all right, well, I'm not going to be like out of bed until around 4 p.m. the next day. And if I try to get out of bed before then, I'll just be like anxious and <laughs> just basically I'm, I'm not functional for so long after I finish drinking. And I, uh, I hooked up with a girl that night and we slept over and it was just like, you know, great experience. She was very cool. We had a lot of fun, but the sleep was just like next level bad and it was the type of sleep where I like don't know if I ever actually like fully fell asleep I was just kind of teetering around deep sleep the whole time and I have like you know so many different memories of me falling or, or just like waking up and it was just one of those nights where you you didn't you don't sleep well and um combining that with the drinking I I woke up the next day and was just like oh my god like I can't can't do anything right now and I had all of these plans like I had made plans with people and I had made plans to go to a pool party and then to go to dinner and then to go to you know I was thinking that I should go to this show you know even though all of this stuff happened none of which was real by the way um, but in my head I was like well like I can't go to a show that I like was supposed to be on but then didn't didn't get on <laughs> I was like, you're going to look so desperate if you just show up to that show. Even though these people are my friends. Like, people on the show are my friends. People going to the show are my friends. And none of them are thinking what I am thinking about myself and my situation here. Even the, even the booker is not thinking about that. But in my head, I'm like, wow, oh, you know, what are they going to think? They're going to be pissed at me, like... For not going but then they'll think I'm weird if I do go <laughs> so you know it in these sort of hungover mind state mindsets where I find myself to be so much more um, susceptible to overthinking and just you know tripping about that kind of stuff um, so I woke up that morning and, and basically immediately went back to sleep after um, after the girl left and uh, and then I woke up and the first thing right away was like people being like, hey, should we go bowling tonight? And like, you know, when you wake up late and everyone in the group text has already decided on a thing and they're just waiting for you to confirm whether or not you're going to go and whether or not it's going to happen. And it's a small group chat, so it's three people. So it's like it feels like it's kind of dependent on like if I say yes or no will be kind of like what happens. <laughs> I woke up to that and I'm like, all right, well, now. 
I, I feel guilty about having slept in too long that these people are now mad at me for not making a plan soon enough. And I feel bad because I don't really want to go bowling. But as I said earlier, I have a very difficult time saying no to people. So instead of just responding and saying that, I spent about, you know, an hour and a half trying to figure out how to say it. At which point, it's been seven hours <laughs> since 8 a.m., which is when they started the conversation. It's 3 p.m., and I'm like, yeah, guys, I don't think I'm going to go bowling. <laughs> as if they're going to abandon me as their friend for not doing this thing. And, like, as if they want me to go do a thing that I don't want to do. You know? It just... Sometimes you get so in your head that you're... You're not... You're not being, you're just thinking. You're not trusting, you're, you're, you're missed, you're not trusting. <laughs> you're just thinking that you have to think through everything before you do anything. And then as a result, you end up never doing anything because you can't think through everything because there are unlimited things to think about. So you get like decision paralysis and it's like, well, I can't think of the optimal way to do this. So I'm just going to not do it. <laughs> I can't think of, I can't decide if I want to go bowling or if I want to stay home, but I feel like staying home isn't enough of a reason to not go bowling. Ah! You know, it's just this absolute cycle of thoughts that, you know, are so unnecessary. But anyway, I eventually told them like, Hey, you know, don't think I really want to bowl. Uh, and they were like, cool, no worries. You know, of course, just disproven immediately. How many times do our, uh, do we need to be wrong about anxiety and the things that we're worried about before we stop worrying? Like I'll spend all day worrying about a thing and then the thing will happen and the fact that I was worried about it made no impact or difference. And it, it just made things worse before the thing happened because I was like experiencing it the whole time. <laughs> And then I'll just move on to the next thing as if my brain wasn't completely wrong about what I was tripping about. So anyway, canceled the bowling, canceled the pool party, and, uh, and then uh, my friend Richie, who's the guy who was on the show, he's the mutual friend. So Richie uh, texted me and he was like, hey dude, you want to go out tonight? And I was like, yeah man, definitely. Like, I think, I have, uh, I think I'm doing dinner at 6.30, but like, I'd be down later. And uh, I had just, like, completely forgotten that the show was that night. And so he was like, yeah, cool, dude. Like, well, the show's at 8, and I think we're going to go out around, like, 9.30 or 10. So if you don't make it to the show, I can totally, like, I'll, I'll let you know what we're up to after. And immediately in my head, I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, I just said that I'm, I'm getting dinner at 6.30, but I could totally make it to the show. But the show is in Hollywood. I live in Venice, so it's like an hour drive and keep in mind I'm still just like so exhausted and anxious and so I got into my head about that because I was like all right well I don't really have a reason to not go to this show um and obviously like Richie's one of the best dudes he doesn't he's not gonna hate me for not going but I started getting in my head about the other people at the show who are going to be like why didn't Sebastian come like why didn't he why didn't he come to this why didn't he come to the show <laughs> what's up <laughs> um so oh chilling dude <laughs> um it is a public beach <laughs> anyway, anyway it was uh it was going what's up dude how's it going um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cheers, dude. Yeah, yeah for know. sure, man. Yeah. Come on, bro. Non-resistance, always. Just like that. Like, it would be so easy to take a scenario like that and be like, you know, immediately defensive or resistant to it. But when you're not anxious, and I probably, if I was anxious, you know, or, or you're hungover, I'd be like, oh, what the hell, you know? But it's like, hey, hello, other being. No issues. Like, it's all good. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. So, I started getting in my head about, like, the other people's reactions. And I started thinking about other people at the show who are like, oh, Sebastian's just, like, 
he's not even busy. Like I felt like I needed a reason, as always, I felt like I needed a reason to not be at this thing and not having a reason other than I'm tired. And I just said that I was going to dinner, so I like felt like I, I just felt like every reason that I was coming up with was being invalidated. And it makes it hard to operate and you just become like, I just think my way <laughs> out of existence, basically. Think my way into this other world where everyone's mad at me. And instead of just relaxing with reality and, and recognizing that, you know, every plan that I canceled today was with somebody who loves me, or that day was with somebody who loves me. And their love is not contingent on me going to that party or that show. There are going to be so many shows. <laughs> so that was what I initially was thinking was like, okay, they're going to be mad at me for not going. And then I started thinking about how this was a mistake on my part because this would have been a great opportunity to network. <laughs> Cause there's like a lot of like really, you know, uh, influential people on the show and in addition to just people that I like and would like to hang out with and it was going to be a good show, I started thinking about it in terms of, oh, you fucked up. Like, this was an opportunity for you to gain something. Which is just such a bad way to operate because it's, like, transactional. And the reason I would be going would be to get something from people there, which is defining myself as in a state of not having enough which makes the interaction so much different because instead of talking to somebody f to genuinely chat with them, I'm trying to talk to them because I, I, I want to advance my career or maybe you'll put me in a video or some bullshit. Like it's, it's for ulterior motives other than being, which are always mind created scenarios that are for egoic gain. It's for my own personal gain or improvement. I also might might have to end up moving. I don't know what the status is of uh, if this mic is picking up on everything that other people are saying. But if I do, that's okay. No attachment. No attachment to any moment. It's funny, like, talking about how anxious I was, but, like, I don't feel it currently, even though going into the past, just last yesterday, and sort of reliving these thought processes does make you feel some of the same emotions looking at it with a new perspective of just like because by the way I ended up just going to bed <laughs> and just slept for like 12 hours which is what I needed at a certain point if you don't have sleep you can't function and that would have been such a reasonable excuse to say to everyone um, which is what I did kind of end up doing but not without you know hours of resistance first and, and dwelling on how they're responding to me not going to the things like, as if people don't know what it's like to be tired and hungover. So, I started thinking about it in terms of transactional, and then I was like, oh my god, like, you really fucked up. It wasn't even that you're, like, you're just being lazy. Started getting mad at myself. <laughs> you know, things, these are not, it's, it's so obvious when you feel good generally and sort of aggressively slip into these negative head spaces it's like wow how it's a it's a hard way to exist so i'm grateful to be able to just <laughs> sleep it off meditate go out to the beach record a podcast relax we're just like right back in the mix <laughs> so anyway at that point i was mad at myself for not going I thought people were going to be mad at me. I thought people were going to, you know, all the different negative ways that people could respond to me not being there. I was playing out in my head and basically just ruining the time that I could have just been relaxing and recuperating and sleeping. <sighs> and then <laughs> I was, uh, I, I tried when I, because I was like aware of how ridiculous I was being, but I still couldn't really snap out of it. I was aware that I was anxious and, and tired and overthinking. And sometimes even when you're aware, that doesn't pull you out of it. 
so I was, <laughs> I was trying to, I kept thinking to myself, like, hey, like, you, you can do this. Like, you're going to get through this. It's going to be okay. Um, and then I just, you know, at a certain point, you just kind of reach, like, I, I kept thinking to myself, like, there's a reason that you're not there. Because wherever you are is exactly where you're supposed to be. Even if your brain tells you that you need to be somewhere else or doing something else, there's nowhere more important than where you are now. And just in the way that there are infinite things that they could be saying about me and why I'm not there and how weird it is that I didn't go to the show or whatever, there's also infinite positive things that they could be saying. And maybe the fact that I didn't go to the show was a good thing because they, maybe I came up in conversation. They were like, oh, what's he up to? Maybe he's up to something important. <laughs> or maybe they ended up talking about me instead of me talking about myself. And maybe that was the best thing that could have happened. Or maybe I, I, be, I was exhausted. Maybe it wouldn't have been good for me to show up and meet all of these people in that headspace, which is like tired and not with it and not on my game. You know, I could have left left a terrible impression. Maybe I get blacklisted from all these YouTubers' channels, and they're like, never film with this guy. He's weird and tired. <laughs> or maybe I drive to the show and get in a car crash. It's all just as likely. And it's up to us to decide what we want to focus on. And... When you're in those negative head spaces, it's hard to not focus on, to not continue focusing on the negatives. But it is up to us. And so that was kind of anchoring for me. I kept thinking, this is what I'm supposed to be experiencing. Even, even the negative feelings, even the overthinking, that's what I'm supposed to be experiencing. And then what am I supposed to be learning from this experience? What is the takeaway from this moment? And, you know, I, I feel like I still to this day have so much FOMO on, on weekends. I feel like things need to happen and I need to be going out and making the most of being single or whatever. And maybe I'll meet somebody that I really like going out. And there's only two nights out of a week where you can go out and dance. So which is just not true, but it's the way that our sort of society is set up. Not even, but like, generally speaking, most people go out on the weekends. <clears throat> so I was having like FOMO too with that. And, you know, like the, the three people who had been like, oh, interesting. Oh, tough. The three people that I had been trying to make plans with, um, or that were, that, who I had been canceling on their plans, all ended up going out in Hollywood. And I was like, oh my God, you could have gotten it together at the end of the night you could have gone to the show you could have met up with everyone and it would have been amazing think of how amazing it would have been but you just don't know and you can torture yourself and ruin the time that you have always by thinking about how amazing something else would have been or you can just lean into where you are right now even if that means growling on the beach that's fine <laughs> You never have to react to negativity from others or yourself. You never have to react to anything. And I was talking to my dad about this. And uh, he made a good point, which was basically like, you know, make the decision from where you are now. Make the decision from how you're feeling now. Not how you felt in the past or how you think you should feel like what do you want to do right now and as much as my brain was telling me you should do all of these things my body was like hey man we're out of gas we're out of energy and that was how I felt in that moment and I was trying to come up with all of these with all of these rationalizations for why I need to go and why I'm a failure for not going. And, um,
instead of just trusting myself to to make the right decision in the moment and to follow the feelings like if you're feeling exhausted it's enough of a reason <laughs> so richie ended up sending me a voice message with like you know uh with a friend of mine who and they were they was like oh we're going to zebulon which is this club in hollywood and literally all three of these groups of people were going to zebulon and i was like motherfucker i'm so mad at myself and then i ended up just sending a text that was like hey like i didn't sleep well last night still a little bit hung over and just don't have the energy and he was like no worries man it's all good which is of course how any of your real friends will respond to <laughs> how you're feeling <laughs> you can see this on camera these guys are absolutely wrestling right now oh epic <laughs> Oh, he's pushing him in the water. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. He just threw him in. That's hilarious. <laughs> this is going to be hard to compete with this for content. <laughs> Spin this around for a quick second just to see these guys wrestling on the beach. <laughs> a pretty good spot. Pretty good spot for a wrestle. <sighs> so, anyway, I kind of just was going through a bit of a spiral last night and just coming back to trusting that this is what I'm meant to be experiencing is a helpful way to relax and be at peace instead of fighting with the mind and trying to outthink the thoughts that I'm having just being and trusting that <laughs> wherever I am is exactly where I'm supposed to be and for those two guys right now all that matters is wrestling on the beach <laughs> imagine if they were in their heads thinking about something embarrassing that happened seven years ago right now and just ruining this absolute blissful experience of wrestling in the water another thing I've been doing is you know, I meditate every day, but I've been putting a lot more attention on my breath throughout the day and just tuning back into that. Whether I'm sitting or even if I'm like talking to people, just trying to, as often as possible, put some attention on breathing. It's a, it's a quick way to come back to reality and clearly yesterday I wasn't doing enough breathing <laughs> or wasn't focusing enough on breathing because so we feel like by not if we focus on breathing it feels like we can't think as much or something it feels like we are losing out on other things that we need to be thinking about but we don't lose the ability to think by focusing on our breathing. It just allows us to be more cognizant of what we're thinking about. And if you're thinking about something that you don't want to be thinking about, try coming back to your breath. It helps. <sighs> I think what I needed to realize yesterday and to feel yesterday was that like, you can't make a mistake. That's it. There's nowhere you need to be other than where you are. And how you feel is enough of an explanation. And you don't have to have a reason to not do a thing. You don't have to explain yourself. You can go through life not explaining yourself ever to anyone.
I don't feel like it <laughs> is a valid reason to not do a thing. <laughs> it doesn't mean you hate the person, and it doesn't mean they're going to interpret it that way. And just a side note, too, didn't even give all of these people the chance to be thinking anything about, like, you know, they're about to go do stand-up comedy. Like, how do I know they're not, like, having their own anxiety attack and not thinking about how shitty of a friend I am for not going to the show? <laughs> this dude's producing a comedy show, and I'm like, he hates me for not going, even though there's, he's in charge of a hundred other people who are there. Not to mention the fact that he's performing, doing his own stuff. <laughs> that's how you know it's ego because what you're worried about is what everyone else is going to be thinking about you and not you just forget the fact that people can think anything and we assume and are sure that of all the things that they could be thinking about they're thinking about me negatively which is never true it never has been Never will be. What's up, bro? <laughs> All good. Chilling. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. All right. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.